the data will not change in virtual machine too. You will have to change the data you manually go ahead and change the data in virtual machine one also. Virtual okay. machine one, two, three are not synchronized with each other. They are three independent machines on which we are, let's say, manipulating the data out here. Okay. So then the question can be that, you know what, uh, if I have really a working website now, it's a simple HTML page. I could, I could just take like about two or three minutes to go ahead and change that particular HTML page. But when you're working with an actual development team, this small HTML page will be replaced by your actual web website, it's your actual website out here. And in order to do a deployment onto your virtual machine, it will take a lot of time. And I'm talking about three virtual machines, meaning you have to go into each and every virtual machine, change the code into each and every virtual machine out here. Imagine you have hundreds of virtual machines. It's a manually very impossible to go ahead, change in the first virtual machine, come down to the second, third, fourth, and all these things out. Uh, that's the reason we have DevOps in place. Now DevOps automates all this, let's say code updates in a rolling fashion. That's where DevOps practice actually comes into picture. So as an administrator, it's very difficult for me to go ahead into all the machines out here and do all these things out. But as a DevOps engineer, I can actually just go ahead, <coughs> configure something called as a CI CD pipeline, add all my virtual machines, then go ahead and deploy the code out there. So in one click, I can do all these things out here. That's where DevOps comes into picture. Again, there's something that we'll again discuss in DevOps. So all these practices, something that we come and you know discuss in what DevOps we use and all that stuff, but just giving you an idea. So if I go back, I now have a test second rule. And if I come here and I say MSCC and go into that particular rule, and I'll now give something called 4001. I'll say connect. And now I am diverting my traffic to the demo VM2. The demo VM2 out here and I'll say yes. So I'm using this particular load balancer as a proxy. And I'm telling this particular load balancer that you know what, if someone talks to you at 4000, then please divert them to VM1. If someone talks to you at 4001, please divert them to VM2 and so on and so forth. So I'm adding multiple rules for each and every machine of mine. And now if you see, let me close this out. I have a remote desktop connection. This 4000, 4001, there's one more thing out here. I'll just close this out here. So I just deal with P2. So this is, let's say, if you look at my connections, let me close this out. And let's see. So this is demo VM1 acting at 4000. And this is 4001 where demo VM2 is present out here. So this is how I go ahead establish rules in order to connect to my virtual machines that are running in the background out here. Yes, any questions still here? Anyone, any questions still here that I can take? On what is are there these any relationship between? Hmm? Sir, is there any relation between front end port and back end port? Because of you are given here 4000 on front end, and back end you are giving mm -hmm. as a 3389. So, what is the relation? The relation is traffic management. Meaning, if you come to a port called 4000, where should I transfer you? Or where should I go and let's say uh, transfer your, uh, let's say, data packet or transfer your connection? So, if you give 4000 maps to 4000, this will not work because in the background, this virtual machine is only accepting RDP traffic at 3389. So is there a relation? Definitely yes. This port will change because I cannot be using the same port again and again for all my virtual machines. This port will remain constant. That's the relationship. Those are just a number or is there any logic behind it? That number? It's, this definitely is a logic. This is just a number. This is just a number. 4000, 4001 is just a number. Double three eight nine is a number. I can give any number, right? You can give any number here. Not a problem. You can give 1000, 2000, whatever it is. You can give any number. Okay. But it should map to 3389 in the background. Backend number is same for all VMs, right? Definitely. Backend number should be same for all the VMs. Okay. Hi Kiran. Hi. Good wish. Here we are. We created natural for a one by one, one mm -hmm. one machine after one machine. 
Correct. Why we are not using back and pull? Is there uh, in back and pull all three all three VMs are there, na? Correct. But even if you use the back and pull, how do you tell that your let's say load balancer that you know what? If I interact with this IP, send me to VM one or send me to VM two or send me to VM three. Back and pull is a cluster of all the virtual machines. Back and pull is not an individual virtual machine out there. Back and pull is a cluster of all your virtual machines out there. So how do you tell your IP that you know what? If I do an RDP connection, this is entirely the back end pool out here. Now, how do you tell your load balancer that you know what? If I do uh, or interact with you at let's say a port called 4000, please transfer me to VM1 or VM2 or VM3. How do you really tell that? You lose that particular freedom to tell your load balancer that you know what? I want to go into virtual machine one, or I want to go into virtual machine two, or I want to go into virtual machine three out there. Okay. Is any more questions here? If you're using Linux, then there's something called SSH, Secure Shell, acting at a port called 22. So you need to use something called, you know, you need to use multiple softwares for SSH clients, and you need to establish connections to that particular, let's say, Linux virtual machine. You'll have, have to change the port, yes. It should be 22 instead of 3389. Is there more questions here? Anyone, any questions still here? Anything? But uh, one problem that I see here is that, see, it's really difficult for me to go ahead and let's say add multiple rules out here. Meaning it's three VMs. I can take about 10 minutes and add three different rules. I can get my job done. But what if there are 300 VMs? What if there are 3000 VMs in the background? Then how do we establish so many rules out there? Let's say there is a way to automate these rules. You can create an ARM template and you can add all these rules in your ARM template and deploy your ARM template out here using a copy index and all that stuff it still works. But as an administrator, it's very difficult for me to tell that, okay, fine, you know what, uh, VM1. So if I have to interact with VM1, then I have to use a port call 4000. If it's VM2, I have to use a port call 4001 and so on and so forth. So it'll become very difficult for me as a backend administrator to manage these rules out there until and unless I have a very good sheet telling me that, okay, fine. This is the VM, this is the port, this is how you need to map and all that stuff. So it's it's going to be a little tricky for me to go ahead and let's say manage all these things. But what, what if I don't have this rule? I'll close this connection. It's okay. What if I don't have this rule in the first place? What if I just have one rule? I just have at least one rule. I need one rule. So I went ahead, configured one rule out here, telling that this is the IP of this particular machine, 4000 go ahead into the backend pool of this particular machine out here. So what if I just interact with the virtual machine one? Uh, I'm sorry, can you please come again? It, it will not go ahead into meaning I cannot establish an RDB connection into VM two or VM three or VM four, five, six, whatever it is true. But I don't need a rule to establish an RDB connection, meaning what I mean to say is that all these three virtual machines are sitting in the same network. This machine can talk to this machine. This machine can talk to this particular machine over private IPs. I don't need a public IP, let's say, or I don't need really a public IP for these machines to talk to each other. Meaning since they are in the same network, they are allowed to talk to each other. Meaning if I have one simple rule in my load balancer, I am an administrator. I am using a rule to get inside my virtual machine one. I am there in my VM one right now. What I can do is after getting inside my VM one, I can open up an RDP from my VM one and say RDP. And by default, any Windows server, anything comes with this particular RDP. I'll go there. I'll go here. And here I will give the private IP of the VM to just 
still works and if I do a test user out here and give the password if I give the right password it should let's say go and establish a connection out there and it's 10.004 and 5 right so so I am now inside the VM1 and now do you see VM2 I'll say yes and now I have two different things out here I am I am doing an RDP to VM1 over a public IP using the load balancer out here and once inside that I now have another session that is inside VM2. I can go inside VM2 by using my VM1 as a proxy or this VM1 is now called as a jump box or a jump server. So I can go into this particular jump server and I can establish a connection to let's say VM2 or VM3 or whatever it is. So now if I again want to do an MSTSE and if I want to connect to the VM3 set end of 0 dot 0 dot 6 the private IP of my VM3 and I can get into let's say once I you know do this particular connection it will take some time to identify the virtual machine and once the virtual machine is identified it will now give me the same certificate out here telling that do you want to let's say establish a connection with the third VM demo VM 3 and I can now go into demo VM3 as well. I can now have multiple connections from the same virtual machine out here. I have two connections 005 and 06. One into demo VM1, the other into demo VM3 or demo VM2 and the demo VM3 out here. I can do this as well. If it's in a different network, I cannot do it. Again, the virtual machines can communicate with each other only if they are in the same network exactly so these machines are in the same network these machines are inside the same network out here and these machines are allowed to communicate with each other because when you create a network security group rule Let's go back into a, one of the virtual machines and inspect the network security group rule of the machine. There is something called as a networking. Inside the networking, there is something called as network security group rules out here. And let me actually go inside the rules. Let's say where is the rule object or let me go into the rule out here directly. So that we uh, take a closer look at that. So this is rule one for virtual machine one rule two rule three. I'll go here into rule one. There's something called inbound rules in the inbound rules. This is RDP HTTP HTTPS, which is something that I have allowed while creating the machine. But do you see there are three default rules? See, I can delete my RDP, I can delete my HTTP, I can do all these things out, but I cannot delete these rules out here. I cannot delete these rules. These are system rules out here. These are default rules out here, which tells you that, well, let's inspect this out. The very first rule out here is telling deny all inbound, meaning <coughs> Please go ahead deny everything out here meaning I cannot go ahead take the IP address I cannot go ahead take the private IP address of my VM3 just 10.0.0.6 and talk to it because it's a private connection that I'm doing and what Microsoft is doing in the background is that it's going ahead and checking in the background rules to understand whether there's any rule to let's say whether, whether there is any rule to go ahead and let's say allow me to do a private connection and this is the issue i cannot connect to it privately because there are these firewall rules or there are these network security group rules that are coming into picture and this rule is acting at a priority called what 65500 just telling deny all inbound whenever microsoft goes ahead and evaluates your rules 
it's always going to be bottom to top approach as the number of priority decreases the the let's say the the weight of the rule increases or the priority for your rule increases out here meaning <coughs> the very first rule is telling deny all inbound meaning don't allow anyone at a priority number called 65500 at a lesser priority 65001 you have a rule called allow azure load balancer inbound meaning the load balancer that you create can talk to these vms over its private ip address that's the reason when we configure a nat rule so even if you are configuring a nat rule out here which is the inbound nat if i add a rule if i say virtual machine if i say target it is not asking me for the public ip it's asking me for what the private ip only it's telling okay fine what is the private ip because the load balancer can actually talk to the private ip out here so <coughs> this rule which is the second one this controls how the load balancer can talk so now it's telling allow load balancer inbound for any port i'm okay with it and this is the source called load balancer destination any and the prior or the action here is to allow so what microsoft will do is that yes i will deny everyone minus azure load balancer because this is sitting at a lesser priority this priority here is 65500 this priority here is 65501 or something like that at a lesser priority a 65001 azure load balancer is sitting and after that comes another default rule called what allow vnet inbound meaning anything that is there inside the same network also allow this out at another lesser priority called what 65000 out here so if i go back again we'll say okay fine uh, i will deny everything but allow azure load balancer and allow all vnet inbound connections all the vnet inbound connections are allowed meaning if you are in the same virtual network then i don't mind you let's say going ahead and talking to your let's say virtual machines at a private ip and finally i have given some rules http https and what rdp even these are allowed at a lesser priority so minus http meaning http connections to your public ip address https connections to your public ip address and rdp connection if you have a public ip address out here all these rules that you create only apply to a public ip and not a private ip address you cannot directly do a private ip address out here this is how i go ahead and assign this again even if i don't have these three rules default rules is any which way is there the load balancer will still be able to do an rdp and you will be able to still do an rdp once you are inside it you don't have to explicitly mention the rdp the default rules will take care of it now if you see my rdp connection is not disturbed at all i can still do an rdp meaning if i remove this out and if i remove another rdp too now i don't have any rdp rule i can still say mstsc i can still say 005 i can give my connection out here and i can get inside my vm2 or vm3 even without an rdp rule because this rule is coming into picture allow vnet inbound because you are inside the vnet you can talk to this particular rule out here now it's saying demo vm2 i'll say yes demo vm2 and now i am inside the demo vm2 from the demo vm1 out here this is how the rules control it this is how the rule let's say really controls it out, out there again even if i don't give the rdp my load balancer can still talk because of this particular rule allow vnet or allowed load balancer inbound meaning load balancer is allowed to communicate with that let's say virtual machine at a private ip the destination can be anything 
in my case the destination here is an rdp connection out here but yes as someone pointed out right if i have a different virtual network let's say this virtual network is a virtual network called north europe and if you have a virtual machine running inside this particular network this virtual machine cannot directly talk to this particular vm over a private ip you should have a public ip for this machine to talk to it let's say there are no direct connections allowed you cannot allow this machine to talk to this let's say virtual machine at something like 10.0.0.6 you cannot do this because this is an outbound call meaning this is a vnet this is another vnet both are isolated from each other these two are two separate entities out there and there is no rule out here on your nsg to allow an external vnet connection there is no rule outside allowed to allow an external vnet connection <coughs> then how do you resolve it we'll talk about that but is any questions still here anyone any questions still here on what we are doing why we are doing and all these things out here you can connect all yes it is it it can be in any subnet you can create it in any subnet out there can we have a public ip of vm sku type basic for the load balancer okay can we have a public ip of vm sku okay vm sku type basic and load balancer standard no you cannot do that if you have a public ip of standard for your load balancer the same public ip gets attached to vm also VMs connected to the parent load balancer where child load balancer will have the IP of the parent or the child VM connected to the parent load balancer will have the IP. So yes, uh, this will have the IP of the child load balancer parent load balancer is just a simple IP address using which you can divert your traffic into your child load balance into your child IPs out there or into your child load balances out there. So the VMs will take the IP address of the child load balancer as such if you're doing a global load balancing mechanism. Yes, any any questions to your any more questions to your anyone any more questions to your okay now uh, my point is that I want to make sure that this VM sitting in an ip address called 192.168.0.4 some private ip talks to this vm over the private ip meaning is there a way to establish a connection between two different networks and allow them to talk to each other answer is yes there is a way uh, no it's called as vnet to vnet peering virtual network peering out here this is the concept that we let's say need to look at this is called virtual network peering but before i go into that concept i want you all to understand what do you mean by virtual network peering azure virtual network peering enables you to seamlessly connect two or more virtual networks in azure the virtual network appears to be acting as one for the connectivity purposes i want you all to look at this and there's a concept called service chaining and how do you chain multiple virtual networks and all these things out so this is the article that i want you all to read on what do you mean by virtual network to virtual network peering again i just typed in google just went to google said virtual network peering azure and i got something called as virtual network peering out here so just click on this particular article and just do a quick read of this particular article to understand what is virtual network peering how does it work all these things out here so this is the concept that we are going to discuss tomorrow on what do you mean by peering and all these things out here yes any questions still here anyone any questions still here that i can take anyone yes, any sir. questions good please yeah uh, for example one page is there number of users are increasing uh, within a minute mm -hmm. so on that time uh, which one is come to the picture load balancer or a traffic manager you know can you come again please for example one website is there okay 
so in that website the number of users are increasing within a couple of minutes that means maybe they, okay. they offer us something else i don't know okay so on okay. that time so the virtual mission or something else in background which one is mm -hmm. come to the picture load balancer or traffic manager no it is not like that load balancer and traffic managers are only there in place to go ahead and divert your traffic uh, they are not going to accommodate the load they are not going to let's say scale up that's what i mean if you want to do a scale up then the concept that we need to look at is something called virtual machine scale set it's something called as virtual machine scale set out here which means that create a virtual machine scale set deploy it and to this one automatically scale your resources so it is not about load balancer or a traffic manager it's the resource that you implement in the background if it's a simple virtual machine sorry if it's a simple virtual machine out here it won't add itself again it won't add resources to it again in order to accommodate your traffic for your particular case scenario if the number of users are increasing you need to increase the capacity on your load balance or if you need to increase the capacity on your backend pools the amount of memory that you get allocated the amount of memory that gets allocated that needs to be increased out here for which you will need to implement a concept called virtual machine scale set vmss in short we'll talk about this as well when the time comes we'll talk about what is virtual machine scale set as well out there so even though if you implement a load balancer or a traffic manager it just knows how to divert your traffic it doesn't know how to scale up out there but client is not ready to increase the virtual machine configuration so on that time what will you do then you because have to deal with very... a very slow website then you'll have to deal with a slow web then you'll have to deal with a very slow website if the client is okay. not ready to increase the amount of capacity then okay. you have to decrease the amount of calls that someone is making out there see it's, it's the same there is no other option there's no other option very simple sir i mean you want a big house but you don't want to pay for it how will you okay. get that big house out there it's very simple okay. so you have to make sure to increase the amount of compute memories that is there in the background for which you have to pay yes but your business is also increasing right so that's something that you have to let's say accommodate yes any more questions here all right so please read this particular concept called virtual network theory let's understand what this concept is by doing a demo tomorrow until then have a good day ahead guys thank you